Hey guys, today I am talking about hydroponics again, and this is a hydroponic system you probably already own, have in your kitchen, and then there's another item that you probably have in your bathroom. So we're gonna put these two together and make a micro hydroponic system. It's super simple. It's basically free if you already have the parts. Let's head into the greenhouse and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So guys, what I'm doing is I'm creating a hydroponic system out of ice cube trays. It's super simple to do. You just need to follow along with a few small rules to make it work properly, but it's perfect for seed starting. Not so much for plant development, but just for seed starting. They're perfect, and a lot of people still have these around their kitchen. Sometimes they have the new ice makers, but they'll keep a few of these in their pantry. So it's a perfect way to start your seeds. So guys, the plastics they make these trays out of now are super thin. It's not like the ones they made decades ago, but you can still put holes in each of the top tray pretty easily. I've tried using a drill and the drill is just too powerful. It does some damage to the plastic. So unless you find a really heavy duty tray that was made maybe decades ago, here's the way you do it. So I'm gonna use a soldering tool and just put holes, two holes in each one. It does put, produce a little bit of smoke. So you wanna try to ventilate the air and do that. So we're gonna do that with a fan on and I'll do it in fast forward. So guys, we're gonna do three different growing mediums on these three pots. On the pots where I've made the holes quite a bit larger, we're gonna use cotton and I'm gonna pull the cotton through the bottom of the hole into our secondary tray and turn that into a wicking tray. So I'm, I'm gonna show you in one of these. These are jumbo cotton size balls that we can do seed starting in the top and we'll pull the cotton through the bottom. So I'm just gonna push this down. I don't know if I'm, hopefully I'm on screen, I'm filming on video here. So what we're trying to do is get these cotton balls to come through the bottom just like this and just do a little twist on them so they're holding together. And that's gonna act as our wicking. So. When you put these trays together like this, they stack. But when you reverse the tray, they sit on top of each other where you can have a water reservoir down below. So each one of this particular tray, I'm using the cotton balls as wicking and that'll prevent the seed from drying out. On the other two trays, I'm gonna use two different types of media, soil media, and then I'm gonna put, to prevent that from falling through, I'm gonna put a small piece of window screen that I did I'd cutting, I was cutting yesterday to do a different project, and I'll link that up above. It's a Japanese bamboo fountain. I'll put that up above so you can take a look at it if you're interested in Japanese gardens. But anyways, that's what we're doing on the other two trays. We're going to turn those into a tray with two types of soil. And so you can see that will prevent the soil from falling into the water below. So guys, I went through and I cut our window screen to fit each one of the trays. And if you look to the side, when this bottom tray is filled, There'll be just a little bit of water touching the bottom of the top tray, which will aid in keeping the seedlings moist, but we're going to use a mixture of 50% vermiculite and 50% perlite on this top part. The screen actually has a couple of benefits here. It's going to prevent our soil media from falling through to our lower tray, and it's going to limit the amount of roots that can get through the holes, because if you have a lot of roots go through the holes and you try to pull your seedlings out, it may tear the roots away. So this keeps the roots growing in the top part, in the bottom part, we have our water initially, and we can always add a little bit of hydroponic solution to aid in the growth, but that's how it's gonna look right there once this one's completed. So guys, the first seed starting tray is our cotton tray, and you can see I've pulled them through the little bit of, I've made these holes a little bit larger so we can pull them through the base, but this is gonna be our seed starter. This is gonna be our water tray. We're gonna make sure we're putting it in right. Okay, we got it backwards there. Now we fill up our bottom tray, and that's our first test run of the cotton example. I haven't got the seeds in there yet, but we're going to do that in just a second. Next, I'm going to show you the one where we're going to put 50% 50 per, 50 vermiculite and 50% um, perlite. And so that will, these little screens will keep the mixture from falling into our soil solution. We're going to put that one together. That is example number two. Now, example number three is using a wicking system and I've put a, pulled a couple of paper towels through the two smaller holes. And so this will be the same, but it will have aquarium gravel and it'll have the two wicking agents in there, which is the paper towel. So that's the three tests we're running. We're, we're using aquarium gravel, vermiculite perlite solution and extra large cotton balls. Now, if you don't have cotton balls, you can take a paper towel and just tear it to about one inch in length, roll it up, 
and then bring the end of it to a point, just a really sharp point, and that's going to help prevent any of our soil meter from falling out of our system. I'm going to take it from the bottom and just pull it to a little bit tight, and this will be a really good wicking system that will pull water directly from our reservoir into our seed starting tray. So guys, I got our third seed tray set up with our paper towels. As you can see, I pulled them through the bottom and they're a very tight fit, so nothing will fall through. This is gonna be aquarium gravel, so we'll start with this one and fill it and then put our seeds in. Okay guys, the first tray we're gonna put our aquarium gravel in, I'm just gonna fill it up from side to side. And as you can see, the paper towels come almost to the top, and in some cases they are at the top, and that will keep the seeds moist. And so this is just a test on aquarium gravel. I've never tried aquarium gravel before. I've always used, tried the vermiculite and perlite, and so I'm just trying different things with these seed trays to see what works best. You okay, guys, I'm going to just put a few seeds in each tray, and we'll mist them and also water from below. And I'm just going to put about three or four per cell. We can do this test and make sure it's heavily watered. All right, I'm going to water from below. And we filled it almost to the top. Set those back in there. And then that wicking action on the paper towels will immediately start pulling that up to the top. And we're going to also mist it. As soon as I find my mister, we're going to do that as well. So we've watered on this particular tray, we, since it's aquarium gravel and it has no water retaining ability at all, it's the only thing that's going to hold water is going to be the paper towels as it wicks it up. So we're going to water from the top and below. On the other trays, we're not going to do that with the cotton, and we probably won't do it also with the vermiculite and perlite. Okay, on the next tray, we're only watering from below because this cotton has an incredible wicking action. So I'm just going to fill the lower tray up with just regular water. And it is filtered water, it's not standard tap water. There's a low mineral content and no, no heavy metals in there. So I'm just filling it up almost to the top. And it's probably hard to see this on camera, but when you set this top tray on, it's actually sitting just maybe a couple of millimeters into the water. So it will immediately start wicking it up. We're gonna put our lettuce seeds on the top and just kind of spread that out. And that is the second set right there. So guys, on the last tray, I'm using 50% vermiculite and 50% perlite. I've washed my perlite to knock down some of the dust. I'm gonna mix these two together. And I'll probably mix a little bit too much. Just gonna carefully mix that and put it into our trays. Okay guys, after a thorough mixing, I'm just gonna carefully drop this into our seed tray and just kind of spread it across try not to get any in the other tray since it's so so close by i probably spilled a little bit into it by accident but it's not a big deal okay, i'm going to finish off these last few cells perlite is still very moist but i will water from beneath on this particular one as well and it will wick it up through the bottom Guys, on our vermiculite perlite tray, we're going to do broccoli. And we're just going to put a few seeds in each cell. And we'll water from beneath, and I might give it a very light misting on top. Okay, I'm going to mist that real quick with our mister. Just a light misting just so the seeds will have a little bit of moisture until it wicks it up through there. And of course, the soil is slightly moist from the perlite I've washed. And I'm just going to carefully add this to the tray. Okay. And that'll wick up from beneath. Now what I'm going to use to set these on my greenhouse shelf is some old lunchroom trays that I have quite a few of. And so I'll set those in a spot in the greenhouse on the shelf. And within two weeks, these will start blooming. I hope you'll keep an eye out and subscribe. In a YouTube short, I'm going to give you the results of these in about 10 to 14 days. 
So guys, this is a great way to start seeds because it's just a very simple method. It's very low cost and you might actually have all the components to put it together. The lunchroom tray, I purchased these over a decade ago and I just use them year after year. They're looking worse for the wear, but they are still in great shape. So that is how I do these little miniature seed trays and I'll just put it on a shelf in the greenhouse. If you have them in your home, you just put them on a windowsill and just wait for the seeds to sprout. This isn't a long-term plant solution, but it's just a great way to start your seeds. So guys, I hope you'll try this project. It's super simple to do. And if you have kids, they'll love to do it as well. It's an easy project to do. And if I left anything out or if there's anything you want to add, please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, have a great day.